Hello my movie peeps and Tom Cruise enthusiasts, I just got done watching Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning and with this latest Mission Impossible movie that is a part one, we find Ethan Hunt and his crew put once again on an impossible mission that turns out to be quite plausible once things get going, only this time facing a threat like they never have before, not even a physical one, an AI beam. And that's all pretty much that we're gonna be spoilers to you guys, this will be a spoiler free review. Ethan Hunt, man, okay, I'm not someone that particularly dives into, like, the James Bond movies. I just never really saw one fully. I think I've seen bits and pieces of all different kind of Bond movies over the years. So in my mind, I've always kind of had Ethan Hunt and the Mission Impossible franchise as my James Bond-esque films. I think it's amazing that ever since the series came back with Ghost Protocol, every sequel has been able to one-up the previous one, not only in quality, but also in the stunts, action, performances. I always end up going to watch a Mission Impossible movie and sweating from every crevice because how intense the story can get. I think even Mission Impossible 2, while it's not the one I go back to a lot, it has some flair to it, it has some style, it could have easily have swayed the franchise into going the Fast and Furious route where everything was just purposely ridiculous, huge, and dumb, but with some style, okay, pigeons flying around everywhere, that's how John Woo liked it. And on the opposite side of that, even though I know it's not the best Mission Impossible, my personal favorite has just always been part three. I feel like Philip Seymour Hoffman was one of the better villains in the franchise, it had a really adrenaline rush story, and it's also kind of the underrated film that set up a lot of things that'll carry on for the sequels. So now moving on to Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning, I know Tom Cruise is gonna bring it, and I'm not even gonna sugarcoat it. I'm freaking love this movie. I thought it was fantastic. I continue to walk out of these movies going, how? How do they possibly keep making sequels to this franchise and each one just feels better than the last one? Now, I'm going to get into the things I really enjoyed about this movie, but there are going to be a couple of things that I feel will draw people back more on this one than other installments because like they were trying to mention, this is finally going to be the closing chapter of the Mission Impossible franchise. It's part one and part two is supposed to end it all. But recently, Tom Cruise came out in an interview and said, hey, I want to be like Harrison Ford and in Indiana Jones and do Mission Impossible movies till I'm 80. There's a very good chance then this franchise isn't ending anytime soon. And you know what? With the consistent quality of these, keep it going, Cruise. I'm going to keep watching. It is an understatement to say how good Tom Cruise is in this role. Like the man truly just delivers in whatever film he's in completely immersing himself into the actual role and also physically the things he does and prepares for these movies i think are wild and might be the last true action star we got and even on that subject a lot of us have maybe seen the behind the scenes video or the build up to that stunt but seeing it in the actual film with the context what's at stake oh man it is such a sweet treat i did like in this one how ving rames and simon pegg's characters both kind of were able to interact with one each other more they kind of have the same job on the team so we almost never really see them collabing and this film they kind of brought that up they're both the tech heads of the group and this movie is very much about fighting a tech threat so it would make sense why we would have two tech individuals part of this team kind of trying to one up each other i was also really happy to see rebecca ferguson return in here now i will say i feel like she was given the short end of the stick on this movie i'll talk about it more in my negative side of things but i feel like the amount she was given to do as part of this mission was really low for how great of a character they've been building her up. Jumping over to Haley Atwell's character of Grace, I was really wondering where she would fit into this movie. I don't really want Ethan Hunt to have like a new love interest for the film and in some of the promotional materials it felt like that's what they were kind of going for and Although her character took some getting used to, you're going to find yourself at times going, oh, why don't you listen? Why don't you just do what you're supposed to? You're messing up the mission, girl. Man, did her character end up doing a full 80 for me by the end of this movie. And just seeing what they were trying to kind of pull off in relation to Ethan Hunt's character with Haley Atwell, I thought was kind of brilliant. Her character basically represents what Ethan was at the beginning of his life before he was a Mission Impossible agent. That's also something else I enjoyed because we don't know much about Ethan Hunt's backstory other than, you know, his previous wife that he protected for a while, that he was on and off the job for a little bit. But in this movie, they kind of really start to reveal where Ethan Hunt came from, what maybe he was doing before he became an agent. And all of those themes come into play in full circle 
couple with Haley Atwell, and I really kind of enjoyed that aspect of the movie. I think some people might still get confused watching it and think that Ethan Hunt's trying to pull a romantic relationship with her, but it's more of a mentor role. Getting on to the villains of the film, here we do have some actual human beings. In fact, there's a couple of villains from different angles trying to go after Ethan. We all know the ongoing joke that almost in every Mission Impossible movie, Ethan Hunt goes rogue. And just like in the last film, they continued to address that here and to bring up, you know, if this guy goes rogue every time and every time he goes rogue, he saves the day, why do we keep going after him every time he goes rogue? Maybe he's doing it for a reason. But if I had to pick a standout out of these human villains, it would definitely be Palm Clementif. Some of us might know her as playing Mantis in the Guardians of the Galaxy. She plays this sort of right-hand man assassin to the bad guy. And again, the things they do with this character from the beginning to the end of the movie, I found so brilliant. She's not just a formidable foe, poses a real threat to Ethan Hunt, but the movie doesn't end up just using her as a typical henchman just waiting to be killed off if anything they kind of use her to enhance the actual big threat of the movie because i want to talk about that for a sec this ai villain now i don't know if maybe i just wasn't paying attention in the trailers or tv spots leading up to mission impossible but i didn't really know this was going to be an ai driven narrative you find out very early on that's what's at stake and this ai device whoever is in charge of it could do some real destruction to the globe and since i didn't know about this going into the movie and once it was explained i kind of said back in my chair and went oh they're gonna tell us an ai driven narrative just like in the comic book universe we're starting to get fatigued with like multiverse stories like every comic book movie is a multiverse film i think the version of that for non-comic book action films is ai oh there's an ai software out there and it's gonna take control of all of us and they always have a cheesy way for how it works but uh let me tell you the Mission Impossible franchise does it right, in my opinion. It doesn't overblow or really exaggerate to like a movie level what you think an AI software could do. It kind of takes a realistic approach and it does some semi-terrifying things to the group. Because there's so many cool action scenes in this movie, as you would expect in a Mission Impossible film. But the great thing about these action scenes is they're also super suspenseful. They get you sweating and wondering what the heck's about to happen and there's an airport scene in this movie where there's almost like a dual mission going on one involving a physical person that they have to stop and then this ai trying to sabotage the mission and it creates this awesome sequence where you as an audience member are focused on two different stressful things at the exact same time you're just like I'm about to have a heart attack in this theater. Aside from the airport scene, my favorite one would have to be this train fight scene that happens towards the end of the film. It just creates these awesome set pieces where they stay within the realm of reality, but, you know, they take little leaps of exaggeration here and there. I wouldn't say anything in here really jumped the shark for me. I still feel like everything within this movie fits in line with what we've seen previously in Mission Impossible. So yeah, I think this is another giant winner for the Mission Impossible franchise. It's become one of the most consistent great action films we have out there and if Tom Cruise is serious about doing these till he's 80 keep them up if they're gonna be this good but even when the films are amazing fantastic even near perfect there's gonna be some things that draw us back you know when our standards are set this freaking high for the movie just any little thing can start knocking you off that peg and going I don't know if I like this film anymore. I like the other ones better. For one, like I mentioned, for me, this definitely was one of the downers, is just how much Rebecca Ferguson was involved in the mission. They gave her such little things to do in here. And it just felt odd to me that she was sidelined this much for the movie with how much they've been building her up. And you take a look at like Simon Pegg and Ving Rhames, and they've been with the franchise for so long, they're always given great meaty roles. And one thing I've always kind of loved about Mission Impossible and Ethan Hunt is he doesn't necessarily have a new love interest every movie. He doesn't have a new girl by his side to show off that look I can kick butt and take butt, you know what I'm saying? So it was kind of nice that we had a consistent female character thrown in there for these action movies that could be paired up with Ethan Hunt and then for her to barely be involved in the mission I was just kind of like oh Okay, I wonder why they did that. The next thing here is I think super minor, but I think is going to be noticeable to some people out there. While I mentioned there are some great action sequences and they're pretty long meaty sequences. There's one where Tom Cruise and Haley Atwell are inside a Fiat and they're running away from people. This Mission Impossible movie really tried taking the time to insert some comedy into these action sequences. So much so that it felt kind of jarring in some moments in here. Now I'm fine with comedy being thrown in there and Tom Cruise can make me laugh every now and then, but I felt like this was the most noticeable Mission Impossible movie where we are literally stopping the mission to do a little gag, to do a little joke, and it just kind of like 
felt odd for Mission Impossible. It only happens like two or three times in this movie, but even then I was like, okay, this is something. I will admit one of those moments had me actually bursting out laughing here, and it's where Simon Pegg is basically telling Tom Cruise, oh, you need to ride your motorcycle off into the air, and, and Tom Cruise is listing off a bunch of realistic reasons for why that's a terrible idea. I was like, oh, I like this. And again, not a bothersome thing to me. It should be quite obvious with the words part one in the title, but I mean, this is the year of cliffhangers, you know, Fast X, Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. People do not like an incomplete story, and so that's really just kind of like a warning to you i thought where the movie ended was a nice happy little place it definitely has me intrigued and interested for more but i don't think it's as big as a major cut as fast x or across the spider-verse where you're going to end the movie going no play the rest show me the rest it's kind of like mission is going to take a pause here and where this mission ended could pick back up in a couple of months in a year if it wants or it can pick up immediately where it ended there i feel like it's a really clean spot but you're definitely still like oh there's more to this story. But really, again, those are just minor things. It's that thing I mentioned. It's a such high-quality, consistent franchise. Little things like that are going to stick out like sore thumbs because they've just been so perfectly executed. And I felt like as far as making risky decisions and changing things up, this is the one that kind of does it. But I'm happy to see a lot of people being really interested in what they're doing. I'm kind of on the fence of making a spoiler review because, again, there's just one decision in this movie that I was kind of like, oh, okay, why? But really, at the end of it, like, like, this movie is great. If you're a Mission Impossible fan, go see it. And if you're not, see it as well. This could turn you into a fan. I don't think you really need to see the previous Mission Impossible films to get this one. I feel like almost every film is pretty much standalone. But there are going to be, like, minor things brought up from the previous films that would be a nice thing to know about ahead of time. But okay, with Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning, I'm going to give action four and a half stars. I really enjoy the action sequences in here. They're pretty long. They're meaty. They're also a great mix of CGI and practical effects in here while well, i'll say there was a lot of times in here you definitely felt like the green screen motion in the background i'm still happy every action sequence can keep me on the edge and wondering what is about to happen comedy in the movie i'm gonna give it two and a half stars like i said this is the mission impossible movie that tries the most in attempted comedy you're gonna know exactly what scenes i'm talking about because they literally just stop drop everything to try and make these jokes before they continue on and while some jokes land better than others i didn't think it was that big of a deal but it is gonna be noticeable drama in the movie i'm gonna give it four and a half stars this is what i mainly go to mission impossible for you can give me crazy fun ridiculous action scenes but if you don't have a story that makes me care about the stakes involved with these action scenes they're almost pointless they're just eye candy and it's junk food for the eyes so to me it's always great seeing mission impossible action sequences because they really are just the cherry on top to this compelling story you're getting and with them starting to tackle an ai threat and the way they handled the things this ai threat does i thought was great Hard in the film, I'll give one star to, and that's mainly just for what the capabilities of AI can do. It's becoming more of a realistic thing in our modern age, and since Mission Impossible takes a sort of realistic approach to this device, and what it can do, and how it hinders their mission, I feel can actually be kind of scary. Suspense the movie, I'm gonna give it five stars. I will admit, the movie starts off a little bit slow once they're setting up, you know, what they're going after, what this AI can do, and what Ethan needs to do to complete this mission, but once that airport scene happens, it is just heart-pounding moment after heart-pounding moment. I loved how this film could actually make me care every single time when these characters are put in danger. Casual fans into the Mission Impossible world, I'm gonna give it an A-. minus. Cinephiles, I'm gonna give it an A+. Plus. And critically, I'm going to give it an A-. minus. For me, Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1 deserves the 3C guarantee. <laughs> Honestly, if I had been doing YouTube since the days Ghost Protocol came out, every single Mission Impossible film from Ghost Protocol all the way now to Dead Reckoning would get a 3C guarantee for me. They're just some of the best action movies that we got going on right now, so definitely go see this movie, man. Get excited for what maybe is the finale or maybe is just one of the arcs in this ongoing Mission Impossible story. Let me know what you guys thought about this movie if you got around to seeing it. Anything and everything, be sure to like, subscribe, follow me on Twitter at 3C Films or on TikTok at 3C Films, but as always, I'm Chris, take care.